I'm Patricia Yuza, the director of the Education USA Academy at the University of Colorado Boulder, one of the most innovative and beautiful campuses in the United States. Here at the Education USA Academy, students explore aerospace, engineering, health sciences, international business, and psychology. A little bit about our business and financial breakdown. They work closely with successful local entrepreneurs to develop their own company and present to real investors. This is the buckle of the solar panel, and this on the sides are the plugins. The fabric will cost around like $3 each fabric, like to make a belt. We give people the option to choose their material, the color of the belt, and the shape of the buckle. If you had three startups and they all failed, not a single investor is going to say, oh, you had three failed startups, I'm not going to invest in your company. They're probably more likely to, because every time you've failed, you've learned something really valuable and you have an even better chance of success. As a team, what you need to know is how much do we need to spend to create something that will bring in more money so we can spend money to create more, and how do we keep this loop going? We design this entrepreneur project using a variety of disciplines so that the students get hands-on experience in creating something. They may not necessarily want to start their own business someday, but you know, if they're working for a nonprofit or the government or some kind of Fortune 500 company, they're going to have to influence people. They're going to have to identify problems and and uh, propose solutions. They're going to have to ask people for resources. And the total cost is 170. These skills are transferable to anything that they want to do in life. Thank you. The presentation went really well. Well, I think if you have a passion for something, you don't need to take any notes with you and have cards in your hands. Just, just go for it. <laughs> Boulder is this incredibly safe and welcoming place for people from all over the world. Pearl Street, so many cafes and musical performers and street performers and it's safe to explore and discover new things. Growing up, I always dreamed of going to the United States and I thought it would just be like that. A dream. But because of this scholarship, this dream has turned into a reality. <laughs> Before I came here, I thought about maybe it's difficult to make friends and maybe I will have difficult time here because Austria and the U United States are really far away. I was worried about being homesick, especially my parents. They said there are people all over the world, maybe they, do, they won't understand your culture, the, the way you are thinking, but that was exactly the opposite. The range of diversity here is incredible. There are 15 different countries represented from all over the world and every continent with the exception of Antarctica. I remember getting here and I was like, man, I'm so tired. I need to go to bed. I need to rest. And, and then my roommate arrived, coincidentally, at the same time as I did. And, you know, and I was talking to him. And I was like, I pulled a 14 hour flight. I'm so exhausted. And he was like, yeah, I put a 38 hour. And I was like, lesson number one. <laughs> The forensics exhibit is definitely the most interesting exhibit to me. Courtney arrived inside the No. Oh, it's not. Look, it's not the same. Growing up, I always read a lot of Nancy Drew mystery books, and that has fueled my passion for mysteries. Alice. When I get older, like, for example, let's say 50, I want to look back to my life and say, I did it, I saw it, and I felt it in my heart. That's my life passion. I mean, we've been walking around hugging each other the whole day. So really, the whole day though. <laughs> it it's all like happened in one month. month. That's, like, that's, that's what's that's surprising. Amazing, yeah. But I don't know, because when they matched us up, they did it perfectly <laughs> right, <Yeah>. somehow. <laughs> we were even surprised, like, yeah. we were so lucky. <laughs> Oh really? Don't cry. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. No, I'll save my turn.
we came together this past month and sure we weren't here to solve all the biggest problems in the world but we did talk and we did make each other better at some point and that's the that's a little thing but that's something that already counts to make a change to make an impact and that's the head start we all need Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to our viewers joining from around the world. My name is Alfred Ball and I represent Education USA and the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. Department of State in Washington, D.C. Education USA's goal is to provide international students with resources and information they need to identify colleges or universities in the United States where they are best placed to succeed. Our basic services for students are all free of charge. There are 550 Education USA advisors at 435 centers in 180 countries and territories around the world. Find us at educationusa.state.gov. Today's Facebook Live is a very special program on the Education USA Academy. The Academy provides a unique opportunity for international high school students to participate in a two to four week pre-college academic enrichment program on various U.S. colleges and university campuses. There are 15 U.S. institutions that currently host academy programs, all of them different and with unique opportunities for students to develop their academic and English language skills and have a real campus experience in beautiful parts of the country. Joining us in the studio today are Sally Conover and Jacqueline McCafferty. Sally is the director of the International Education Center at Diablo Valley College in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Sally has worked at IEC for 17 years and in international education for over 30 years. Jacqueline McCafferty is the director of the Intensive English Language Program at Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In this role, Jackie is responsible for recruitment, enrollment, and program development. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. During the program, we will answer questions from our viewers. If you have a question that you would like to ask, please post it in the comment section below. We will do our best to answer all your questions during the program. I would like to start our discussion by giving a more uh, detailed overview of the Education USA Academy. Sally, can you tell us more about the program uh, and what the requirements are for international students? Sure, Fred. Um, I want to first thank you for inviting us here today. Um, what a great opportunity to talk about the Academy. Um, I'd also like to thank all of you, uh, viewers participating from around the world, and we hope that this is informative and gets you excited about the Academy. So maybe I'll start with the five W's. Um, the first of who is the Academy for? Um, this is for 15 to 18-year-old international high school students. 
um, who are interested in studying in the United States in the future, maybe want to learn more about the United States higher education system. We know that our system is quite different from many systems or most systems in other parts of the world. So it's a very good opportunity to get more information about the system here. Um, and it's also a program for students with an intermediate to advanced level of English. Um, the what? So the academy is an academic preparation uh, program with 18 to, 20, 18 to 22 hours of class a week. Each of the academies is a little bit different, but there are some key features for all of them. Um, again, as I mentioned, one of the main goals is to have participants um, get more information about the system, how to apply to into a university or a college, and all of the many options and varieties of institutions that there are within the United States. Um, each of the academies, um, in addition to uh, having obviously being on campus, there are also campus visits in the surrounding areas. Um, so you'll, students will be able to have um, see large campuses, small campuses, in an urban setting, in a rural setting. Um, there are also opportunities for participants to do volunteer or service learning. Um, some students have done this already in their countries and others maybe this is the first time to have such an opportunity. We take students out to some of the wonderful national parks throughout the country. Um, I know in our program we go camping, so for some students this will be a first time to ever go camping. Um, students either live in a dormitory um, or in a homestay, and we'll be talking more about that later. And then there's also this experience is um, to, to be able to interact with the local community um, and also with local students in, in the area. The when, so um, we offer, the 15 academies offer programs in our summer, um, beginning in June or July. And then there are a few programs that offer um, academies in our winter, so starting in January or February. Jackie will be going into um, more detail about the different locations, but there are 15 different locations spread around the United States. So this is a great opportunity to see very, very different parts of, um, of the United States. Why? Um, so again, this is for somebody who's maybe thinking that down the road they would like to do a bachelor's degree or another program in the United States, and this gives them a, a taste test before making a large and a long time term commitment um, of maybe four years. Um, and then lastly, how um, students are coming on a tourist visa or the B1, B2 visa. And in some cases where they're sponsored by an embassy, they would be coming on the J visa. Um, it is a self-funded program, um, although so students are paying on their own. Although in some cases there are scholarships, um, there are scholarship in, or opportunities from the individual institutions, and then some of the embassies also offer scholarships. We always encourage students to find your local Education USA advisors uh, for information about um, scholarship opportunities. So this is a brief overview of the program. Okay, thank you very much, Sally. That's a great starting point. Can you help us understand what some of the benefits are uh, for student uh, participants? Sure. And we'll have some alumni of programs talking about their experiences. So from my experience as, a, as an institution, and I think from the host institutions, there's a number of uh, benefits for, from the academy. Um, First and foremost is the diversity. Um, I know that students are coming from all over the world. So not only are participants having the opportunity to learn about the culture in their local area, their classmates are also from around the world. So the learning that goes on um, from that diversity is, is, is amazing. Um, there's those differences, but then there's also a commonality in that the students are highly motivated. They're inquisitive, they're curious, they, are, they want to do everything. And that 
energy is contagious. So we find um, the energy coming from the academy programs is, is, is contagious to our other programs across the, the campus. Um, an important benefit for students also is to the making of contacts. And we think of going to an academy um, as a first contact point. Um, and then those contacts and the relationships that are developed during the academy grow throughout, well, throughout somebody's lifetime. The academy is relatively young. It's around five years or four years now. But we see alumni of the academy meeting each other in their home countries or meeting each other in a third country. We have students who have come back and talked to teachers as and gotten their assistance as they're going through the university acceptance process. Um, we have alumni who are also, when they go back to their home countries, are helping out at educational fairs and talking about their experiences and helping to spread the word, which is also helpful for the student in and of for themselves. Um, so they become mentors to other participants. Um, so there's a lot of um, benefits for the students. And the last thing I would say about the benefits is um, because the host institutions are working with a slightly younger population, it's a very important time for the institutions to be able to be in touch with what younger students want and how they're learning. and how they're interacting with each other so we can use that to inform other programs that we have. Thank you, so. Sally. That, that's a super valuable perspective. And it sounds like the Academy is a program, you know, even if someone doesn't wind, wind up coming to study in the US, it's a great experience. Sure, absolutely. Uh, professionally, academically, very good quality programs. Yes. Um, Jackie, let me turn to you. Now that we have learned more about the Academy, um, can you share your perspective on what international students should keep in mind when they're applying for the, to the Academy? Yeah, sure, Fred. Um, so I think it can be a little bit overwhelming when you start this process. Um, as Sally and you, Fred, both said, there's 15 Academies to choose from. Um, and so where to begin? So I like to advise students to begin by the location. Um, what, what do you like? Do you like a big city? Do you like a small city? Do you like mountains? Do you like rural? Um, look into each of the universities and make sure that you're in an environment that you are going to be comfortable, that you feel like you are going to thrive. So that really is the first point that I advise students to start with. The second point is to look at what the Academy offers. So as both of you said, Sally and Fred, um, every academy has similar uh, criteria, similar components, right? So it's a pre-college program. There's going to be cultural activities. Um, you're going to visit other colleges and universities. Um, there's going to be some classes. Uh, you'll learn about American culture. Uh, so that's great. And everybody's going to have some version of that. But once you look at each of the academies, you'll see that some do focus on certain disciplines. So there are some academies that will focus on STEM. Some will focus on business and entrepreneurship. Uh, we focus on art, music, and film. Uh, there is aeronautics. I mean, there's a lot of different types of things that you can focus on. And if you have an idea of what you want to study, then maybe you want to look at a program that maybe has that and you get an idea of what that might be like when you're studying at a college or university. So it sounds like, Jackie, I mean, students have both lots of different places mm -hmm. that they can choose from, but the specific programs themselves yeah. that can be fascinating different windows into yeah. very fun things, yeah, aeronautics, exactly. and that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the Academy program accepts international high school students as young as 15 years old, uh, you mentioned, Jackie. Um, what would you say to parents who are interested in the program, but are also, you know, who might be concerned about their child being away from home, or like mm -hmm. about safety issues, things like right. that? Right, yeah. So um, I, I can say for us, and I know for Sally and every other Academy, safety is the number one priority. You know, I know I'm a parent, um, and 
so I put myself in the shoes of, of parents who are sending their children to us. And so how would I want my child to be treated and what safety precautions would I expect? So um, I think as parents, the, the thing to do is to um, look on the university website and you'll get a sense of the safety precautions that the university in general takes, right? So every university here takes safety very, very um, um, important, right? So you're going to find that there's a security team on campus. Some campuses have uh, their own police force. Um, there's shuttle systems, so if you're not comfortable walking around by yourself, you can take a shuttle or an escort service, something like that. So um, generally speaking, campuses are very, very um, secure. Now, when it comes to minors, then we go that extra mile, right? So now, what are we doing because a minor is anybody who is under 18 years old? So for example, if it's in a residence hall, you're living in a minor dormitory, a residence hall that's only for students who are under 18. Everybody involved has a background check. Um, same thing if you're living at a homestay with a, an American family. There's background checks to make sure that the setting is very safe. Um, from the point that your child comes here, they are picked up at the airport and they really are never alone again. In, in terms of just always having somebody there with them to make sure that they're safe. Um, all of the programs have chaperones. And I know in our case, the chaperones are 24 seven. They live in the residence hall. Uh, we train them to deal with emergency situations, but we also train them to deal with culture shock, homesickness, all of these things. Um, we do things like the buddy system. You know, don't leave the residence hall without your buddy. Who's your buddy? So there's a lot that we do to make sure that um, the, the student is safe and keeping the parents in mind that um, it's something that we know parents would feel comfortable sending their child to us. That's great. So you've thought mm -hmm. about the details of... Um, We've thought you know, of every detail, Fred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Maybe. Yes. We, absolutely yeah. sounds like it. And that's yeah. something that, you know, is so it still is really attractive and fun for students. Mm -hmm. And parents can rest assured that, in fact, the, you know, the colleges and universities are really taking the well-being of anyone on the program right. as, you know, primary. Exactly. That, that's fantastic. Thank you mm -hmm. very much for sharing that information, sure. Jackie. I, I now want to introduce a surprise guest who is joining us virtually from Curitiba in Brazil. Larissa Vanzu is an international high school student who participated in the Academy's winter session this past January. Hello, Larissa. Hello, Fred. Hi, nice, nice to hear you. Can everybody hear Larissa? Yeah, I can. Excellent, great. Um, so we are really eager to hear about your experience with the Academy. Um, can you tell us why you chose uh, the program you did? So I guess it all started when I was looking for something to do during my vacation. And when I was searching for a program, I could either find something that focused too much on learning English or just having fun in some city. And when I find and when I found the academy, I noticed that it was just perfect for the why I wanted, because we would both have fun and I could improve my English. And also there was this, that we would learn about the system of education in the US. And that's something really important for me, considering that I want to do college in the US. And another reason that helped me choosing the academy it was its high integrity. Since the beginning, I could notice that there was this concern of us meeting the teachers before so we could get familiar with them and we wouldn't feel lost. And also during my time in the academy, there would always be someone available for us to help us and make sure everything was okay. And the academy definitely fulfilled everything that was promised and even more. That's fantastic. Um, can you tell us what was your favorite part of the program? Well, I loved the activities and the classes we took. About the activities, I had a particularly one that was my favorite. It was when we visited a tech company. And I mean, we were in Silicon Valley, so that was just a unique experience. 
And also when we visited the universities, I could see different types of campus and well, now I have a better idea of what I want to do for my future. I can consider different kinds of universities. That's and fantastic. about the classes, uh, they not only help me uh, learn more for my application process and to improve my English, but now I know how to do college assignments better and everything. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations on your English as well because you did, uh, you've done a great job and I'm really happy to hear what a great experience you had in the Academy. Thank you for joining us uh, on the program, Larissa. We're grateful to have you. Um, it is now time for us to answer questions from our friends on Facebook. Many viewers are asking about scholarships. How do students apply for scholarships uh, to the uh, Education USA Academy? Um, Jackie, can I ask you about that? Sure, yeah. So there's two types of scholarships. Uh, some of the institutions who have the academy will offer their own scholarship. And I think the best way to really learn about that is to just ask, ask the institution, right? So um, when you reach out to them, ask them if they have scholarships, and they will step you through that process for how to apply for that. There's also other scholarships available, and I would say to really talk with your Education USA office and learn more about some other scholarships that might be available. That's a very good point that there is Education USA all around the world. Right. You have local experts who can talk to you about the academy. Yes. That, no, that's a, thank you very much. Our next question is from Arsène Katawa, who would like to know what are the different requirements for a student to apply to the academy. Sally, can I ask you that? Sure. Um, so again, the age and the program is, um, the academy is for 15 to 18 year olds, um, high school students. So those are to still be in high school um, and to be in that age. And then um, the English level requirement, that actually varies a little bit from, from academy to academy. And again, um, each of the academies it specifies what their requirements are for the English language requirements. And there aren't, there may be a few other specific requirements from specific academies, but it's a, an excitement and a, a, a desire to explore and also a little bit of a desire to be a little bit independent. Mm -hmm. So this program, unlike some other programs, is not one where you come with a group. Uh, for the most part, you're coming on your own. So that sense of adventure, uh, that you will be well taken care of, but it is a little bit of an adventure, is, is maybe helpful. That's fantastic, and that definitely links to what Jackie was saying, that you need to, students need to look at each of the academy programs and see what they offer, because they can be a little bit different, right. right? And so the general thing is the same, but each what, you, what you're going to be doing specifically, where you'll be, what the program is focused on, maybe what the English language level requirement is, might be a little bit different. But my sense is that there's something for everybody. Um, is that yes. about right? That is because we have 15 different programs, one of them is going to be right for you yeah. if you're looking at them. Yeah, yeah I think okay. so. Okay, that, that's great. Thank, sorry, Jackie, did you want to I was add? just going to say another criteria might be a teacher recommendation. I've noticed that a lot of institutions do ask for, or a lot of academies ask for a teacher yeah. recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. something to consider. And mm -hmm. for those students listening, that is something that Education USA can also help you with. We understand that you know systems around the world are different and that not everybody is used to writing a recommendation. So our advisors can help speak to your teachers you know, about what that is and how to do that. Uh, that's something that our advisors do around the world also for students who are applying to U.S. and colleges and universities uh, as a general issue. So our next question from our viewer is how much does this program cost? and what does tuition include? A very important, good question. Jackie. Okay, so the price ranges, but I believe, and Fred, correct me if I'm wrong, yep. that it will never go over $6,000. Is that yep, that's correct? Right. Yep, that's right. Okay, okay, so um, it ranges up to $6,000, and it includes absolutely everything from the moment that you land on the ground, so not the flight, to and from home country, 
but from the moment you land on the ground, you will be taken care of, meals, transportation, where you are living, the classes, all of the books and materials. Um, and Actions. I assume activities too, like I, if you go on... All of the activities are included, the transportation to get to and from the activities, any entrance fees to museums, all of that. It is absolutely included and so really all that a student would need to bring is whatever spending money that they would want to bring. In addition to... In addition right. to all but of that. But you wouldn't that. have to... If they the wanted that, souvenirs, for right, example. Right, yeah. So everything, and that's nice, so parents know that essentially it's one fee and mm -hmm. then everything is taken care of. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you for the question. So then our next question is, is this an intensive English program with formal English grammar courses? Uh, Sally. I would say no. Um, there is an element of improving your English language skills, um, primarily in the area of academic English skills and academic skills, those things that are needed for success at a university or a college. Um, but it's not what you would think of as an intensive English language program with an hour of grammar or an hour of reading and writing. It's, it's a more... Um, Holistic program, um, yes, working on English language skills, writing, presenting, uh, writing an essay, those type of things, um, but not a, a traditional right. uh, ESL, EFL course. So it's, not, it's not focused just on English, but it's focused, uh, you get the English by doing. Right. It's right. in a way by being there, your English is right. going to get better because you'll be writing essays, you'll be speaking, you'll be doing all those things, mm -hmm. and I assume that instructors are, are focused on improving English as part of it. That's right. Is that right? That's right. But it's yes. not. It's not. That's not the. Uh, that's right. The way it's structured. No. That, that's a, that's a great answer. Thank you. Our next question is related to this. Um, I am a native English speaker. Is this program for me? Um, Jackie, do you want to take that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So um, it is. It is for anybody. I think. Um, and again, going back to the requirements that we talked about, just look at the academy that you're interested in to see what the requirements are. But I would say it's for anybody as long as you meet whatever that minimum language requirement is. And from that all the way through to a native speaker. Because of the types of activities, the types of classes, the types of learning, it's experiential, right? So um, a native English speaker, a, uh, an intermediate speaker, everybody will get something out of this and will be exposed to uh, a, a university or college environment and, and beyond and the American culture and everything else. The types of um, maybe um, exercise, it's like activities, homework, whatever that might be, um, can be differentiated based on the level of proficiency, so that's important to note as well. That makes a lot of sense, and teachers, mm -hmm. I assume, are focused on the different levels, right? right. They're, they're helping everybody learn together, right. and everybody is improving herself or himself you know, at the same time. Exactly. Okay, yeah, that's, exactly. that's great. Our, our next question is from Osvaldo at Ibeo Serra in Brazil. Uh, Osvaldo is asking, how is tuition paid? Can one pay with a credit card? That's a very, very specific, good question. Practical. Um, very yeah. practical, exactly. <laughs> Sally, do you, maybe you can speak from the perspective, from your program's perspective. Sure, sure. Um, yes, uh, yes, yes, and yes, right? Uh, as far as payment is concerned, we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, students pay with credit cards. They might do a wire transfer, a bank-to-bank -bank wire transfer. Um, in our program, for example, uh, full payment can be done upon arrival. So again, there are differences um, amongst the programs of how um, how the payment is made. I would say the majority of our students are paying in advance with through a credit card. Okay, so that's very common. And, yeah, same here. But the same. So, okay, mm -hmm. so schools have lots of flexibility with mm -hmm. you know working with payments, but credit cards are common. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Piles of cash is not recommended. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hard. To, not, not good to transport. Um, so uh, Maya Lynn Mena is asking: Is there an option for payment plan for the academy? So um, I guess could you pay over time? And I think that would depend on the individual um, academy. The institution, yeah, right? The university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. So a bigger, kind of a big picture question, how do I pick which academy 
to apply to? Probably the very hard question. Jackie, do you want to tackle that? Sure. Well, like I said earlier, I think you really want to, a good place to start is the Education USA website that lists all of the academies. And then there you have them all in front of you, and you can see where the academies are. And like I said earlier, try to find one in a location that you know you're going to be comfortable. If you, if you know you don't like big cities, don't choose an academy in a big city. It, it, you're not going to be comfortable, right? So that's one place to start. And then look at what each academy offers. So like we said, all the academies have very similar components, but then there are the differences that they have to offer as well. Um, so pay attention to what those differences are because one of them might speak to you more than another. Um, once you identify one that really stands out to you, then I always recommend reach out to that academy and start communicating with them and get your detailed questions answered to make sure that you're truly comfortable with the decision. That's very good advice. So do your research. It's not hard. It's all on the Education USA website. Mm -hmm. And then reach out to the academy. Right. Ask them some questions. Don't be shy. Right. Right, yeah. And, and if I could add, um, I think a lot of the academies have um, testimonials from alumni, and they can also put you in contact right, yeah, with former point. students who may be in your country, if not in your city. So um, again, doing that pre-work of, of asking questions and then hopefully being able to be connected to people who could give you more specific advice and, and mm -hmm. their impressions. That's great advice. Yeah. So alumni, uh, people who can, like yeah. Larissa that we just heard from, uh, who, get, who can give you a direct perspective. Exactly. Right. Um, and probably we can even link parents to parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. So our Education USA advising centers can certainly right. uh, link parents to you know, other people who have been, who've children, whose children have been through this experience and, mm -hmm. um, and you know, might want to get a perspective from that way as well, from yeah. that side. Yeah. That's great. So. Um, we, uh, a very specific question, will I have a roommate on uh, during the program? And what are the housing accommodations like? What's a dorm like? Jackie, do you wanna, that's yeah. a good, a dorm <laughs> life is kind of, it's one of those things you see in yeah. movies, right? Right, exactly. And it's exciting. Um, so in our case, um, everybody does have a roommate, um, or at least we try um, for everyone to have a roommate. And, and we are intentional with how we room people together. We get some background information on you so that we can have, have hopefully the best pairing possible. And typically, um, your roommate becomes your closest buddy, right? You really start to learn about each other. And Sally, as you said, it's so diverse. Your roommate will likely be somebody from a completely different country that you've never been to or maybe never even heard of. And so what you learn is amazing through that roommate experience. Um, and dormitory life is exciting um, because you are living in a building with all other people your age. So in our case, uh, your, our international high school programs are also living in the same dormitory as the domestic mm -hmm. American high school programs. So you're all living together um, and getting to know each other. And there's always activities going on in the residence halls as well. So there's a lot to do. It's a lot of fun. OK, that's, that's a great perspective. And mm -hmm. it's nice to hear that so students will be meeting, you know, Stu American students who are participating in other right. programs, right. not the academy, mm -hmm. but are on campus right. exactly. and their own age. Exactly. So it's a way to meet lots of Americans and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of figure out, you know, what American society is like. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, I know that we can ask the same question of Larissa. Um, so Larissa, can we go to you and, because I believe you had a homestay experience and weren't in a dorm, but with a family. Could you tell us about that? Well, first, I was a little bit uh, reluctant about being at a host family house. That was an experience different from what I used to. But then when I first arrived there, I arrived there with my parents. And I was just so happy because my host family helped me in so many ways. And I really felt as part of their family. It was really special for me to be there. 
That's, that's fantastic. So it wasn't what you expected, uh, a nice experience, and I assume that you still are in contact with them. Yes, definitely, for sure. I still talk to my host mom and my host sisters. It's really fun. That's fantastic. Thank you, Larissa. So uh, another question we had is, what are the dining facilities like? Um, you know, I assume it's different, but in general, if you're, of course, if you're at a family, you're eating with the family at home, but if you're in a dormitory, uh, Sally, what would the, the, Jackie, oh, Jackie, yeah, sorry, yeah. Jackie, please. Sure. So uh, when you live on campus, you have access to the cafeterias that are on campus. Um, and typically the cafeterias will give you um, many choices. Uh, one of the things that students often tell us is how funny it is that here in this country we like to have cold lunches, sandwiches, salads, things like that, right? But that is a lot of what you will be exposed to. Um, but there's also uh, opportunities outside of the cafeteria. So for example, I don't know if you do this, Sally, but we students get an ID card. And on that ID card is money for them to eat, not just in the cafeteria, but anywhere around the campus. Oh, nice. Right? So they can go to a restaurant around campus and be able to eat there. And we have restaurants representing food from all over the world. Right? So if you're feeling homesick for food from your country, chances are there's, there's a restaurant that, that you might be able to, to go to. So there's a lot, of, a lot of choices. So you can have the truly American ca cafeteria experience or you can go elsewhere and experience other food. And that's certainly the case for all academies. Campuses are very international places. Yes. There's a lot of international yes. food. So we have a next, uh, our next question is related to this from a viewer. I'm Muslim and only eat halal food. Will the academy accommodate my religious and dietary needs? Um, Jackie, can you, can you speak to that? Yes. So our cafeterias will accommodate halal. Um, and in fact, we have many restaurants that are halal restaurants around the campus. So that is not a problem in our case. And again, going back to your point of most US campuses are very international. I think yep. that it's safe to say. But again, ask. Right. Always ask be and don't assume. Right. Well, and also during the application process, um, those kind of questions, if there are any specific needs, Health, re health restrictions or dietary restrictions, those will come up in the, um, in the yeah. application when we receive that. So that also helps us plan and get a better sense of who the mm -hmm. academy students are going to be so that we can make sure that their needs are also being met. Right. E excellent. So again, bottom line, reach out, mm -hmm. ask these questions, yep. specific questions, make sure yeah. that you, you know, you're doing your homework when you reach out to the academy that right. you're interested in. Yeah. 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 And once you do apply, be, give us as much information as possible. More information is always than, uh, better than, than yeah. too little information. Okay, that, and yeah. that's very good yeah. advice. It's true. That's very good advice. So our next question uh, from our online viewers, are there programs that are specific to the arts, to STEM fields, um, and entrepreneurship? So essentially, I guess, you know, liberal arts or arts, STEM, sciences, and business kind of programs. Do, Jackie, do you want to speak to sure. that? Sure, yeah, well, to the arts, I can say, well, at Temple, we have a special track for the arts, so you can focus on art and design, music or film um, in addition to the regular academy pre-college program um, business i know there's quite a few programs that do have business and entrepreneurship as a focus and stem i think that you will notice that i, I think quite a few actually have a stem focus i think do you do you have a stem we focus? have a steam focus you have a steam which focus includes then the arts yeah. the a for in, yeah. in the steam excellent um, yeah yeah. And be real, I know there are lots of sort of, you know, unique programs, each with a little bit of a different focus on STEM right. or yeah. STEAM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think also programs are trying to incorporate the, the, that focus, but then incorporating what is in their community right. um, into that. So a lot of our activity programming, we're taking advantage of what is in our backyard to do visits mm -hmm. to tech firms or companies and to incorporate that into the curriculum, but then also into to the activities. Okay, excellent, yeah. that's fantastic. So you really link to the community as right. much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so our next question is, will I receive 
university credit for my time in the academy. Sally, do you want to sure. take that? Sure. Um, and so again, we'll direct you back to the website right. to look at the specific <laughs> um, the specific academies. There are a few academies that do offer university credit, um, and not all of them do, um, but some of some of them do. So I think the best resources to go to the individual sites um, and and identify which ones do. Okay, so again, yeah. do your homework, go to the website. Some do, some don't, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's different. Yeah. And so yeah. if that's something that's really important to you out of an academy experience, it's something that you should make sure that you look at and then write to the school about yeah. uh, and make sure that you verify, yes, I'm getting what I expect. Right. Yeah. What I would say also, though, is it, not all the academies offer university credit, but I think all of the academies participants leave their experience with some tangibles so um, they will uh, often well they'll receive a certificate they will receive grades of some sort they may receive a letter of recommendation for participation mm -hmm. in the program um, in some programs they are given a standardized uh, test so that they have a hard score so the, while some programs, academies may not offer university credit, there are real tangible things that the participants will leave the program mm -hmm. with. So for example, if I'm a, a participant in the academy and I and them, and them applying to school somewhere, it's something I would definitely want to cite. Yes. yes. And yes. say, I did this, this is a program, and it's yes. something that schools that admissions officers certainly look to and value. Yes, right. and we've had an uh, alumni say that they actively use their experience in the academy in mm -hmm. applying to universities, and they feel that it was it was a definite benefit for yeah. them. Okay. And and most academies, if not all, will have admissions workshops yes. to help students learn about the application process to United States colleges and universities, and will always remind students be sure to talk about this experience, right? So that that is built into the academy yeah. itself. And I know for the art and design portion of what we are doing, we're also including a portfolio building piece to that. So okay. if you're interested in going to art school in the United States, what does it look like to apply and put together a portfolio? Um, you have to have that. And they will walk away from the academy with a piece of art that they created there that they can use a, in their portfolio. So I think most academies are building a lot of this in to what they're doing. Okay, that's, yeah. uh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. An excellent perspective for students yeah. about the value of the academy, just personally, but mm -hmm. also you know, very practically very as they practical. move forward yeah. in their academic lives. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so our next question is probably one that I will uh, try and answer myself. Uh, it's from a viewer who asks, what kind of visa is required for this program and will uh, Education USA help in that process? And the answer is uh, certainly in the sense that um, we, uh, the, the, the students will apply for either a B1, B2 uh, tourist visa um, or a J visa if they get specific kinds of funding uh, for the program. And Education USA does issue um, uh, a letter that, uh, to students that uh, says, that explains the program um, and that uh, says that it is a Department of State uh, uh, run program. That doesn't mean that you are guaranteed to receive a visa. Each, each visa uh, adjudication is a separate decision and is up to the consular officer, um, but we definitely um, will assist with um, certainly transmitting the information that you are um, on a program that is um, uh, one of the Department of State. Larissa, I'm wondering if um, you are still friends with some of the people that you met on the academy program, so not just your host family, but um, with the people, you know, with some of the, your other students. Yes, definitely. I met a lot of lovely people there, of course. I talked mostly to my friend Carolina. She was like my partner, the whole program and the whole experience. We would do many things together and take a lot of pictures. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your plans now? Do you are you planning to study to study in the U.S. or what? What what's what lies ahead? 
Yes, definitely. I plan to study in some college or university in California. I'm still figuring out which college or university, but definitely in California. <laughs> Okay, so one question. I know that as part of the program you visited other schools. You were at, the, at your school and then you saw others. Was that a helpful thing? Did you like seeing the different kinds of schools yeah. that you can apply to? Totally. And like here in Brazil, we, get, we have a different perception of what a college is. But when I could visit and learn in the U.S. what a college means, I could now consider this as an option of where I want to study in the future. This really changed my idea of it. Thank you very much, Larissa. We appreciate that, uh, that perspective. It's great to hear. So we have uh, time for a final question. Uh, our viewer asks, have any Academy alumni gotten into undergraduate university programs in the U.S., and did the Academy help them? And I know the answer is yes, absolutely, for sure. Um, and maybe the two of you can give us some uh, perspective. Jackie. Yes, uh, definitely. I know we have a, a, an Academy alum who's going to be starting at Temple this September from Russia, which is very exciting. Um, and we have others. The, the first one that stands out to me is an alum from Curitiba, where Larissa uh -huh. is from. And she is studying, I can't remember the university, it's in New York City, um, forensic science. She Fantastic. is studying, yeah, yeah. So they, they're coming back. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's uh, yeah. Sally, any stories? And, and likewise, and we're, we're actively trying to keep in touch um, with, our, with our former uh, academy participants to kind of track where they're going and if they're, if they're staying in their home countries or if they're coming to the United States. Um, we've had some students uh, start at San Diego State University in Southern California um, and at other universities. So it's, and, and as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the students, he, he credits the academy on one mm -hmm. of his reasons for not only getting into a university, but getting a lot of funding and scholarships mm -hmm. for his program. Um, so we're excited to, uh, to continue to, to track the students and, and see what their, what their future is holding yeah. for them. So it sounds like this is a very important message for people listening that one of the things to take away is that um, many students, even though they go to a particular school at the academy, a particular academy, they don't necessarily enroll in that school. Right. They might, but they might also go to many others and that right. they're successful in enrolling. Mm -hmm. um, and that the academy schools support each other as well. You right. are also a network and I know that I've heard many academy schools say, well, you know, we look at it as, look at it as a very good thing if you went to one of yeah. these academies. Um, and certainly other schools that are not part of the academy network do the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's definitely something we've, we have seen. Um, I'm sorry that we're out of time for questions. Um, we would now like to share a special message from an academy alumnus who is currently attending Dartmouth College here in the United States. He talks about how the uh, academy impacted him personally. Um, so we spoke to Gustavo Lamar Shahad to get his thoughts on Education USA and the academy, his life as an international student now studying in the United States. As of today, right now, I'm a student here at Dartmouth, Co at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. I'm a, I'm a freshman. I'm a part of the class of 20, 2022, which is the international class. Uh, my life is, um, I guess I could say fantastic right now. I'm exactly where I wanted to be. Super happy, excited about the following two years of my life here. Uh, I've had an amazing year so far, met incredible people, took amazing classes. Um, I guess overall, I have to say, life is pretty good so far. <laughs> the Academy came at a really good time. I was in my gap year. I was looking for activities, looking for kind of a different experience that not only would improve my resume, but also um, work on extracurriculars and kind of give me a sense of uh, if college life in America was what I was looking for. And 
So when I got a scholarship from Education USA to attend a one month program at the University of Boulder in Colorado, it just felt like the perfect opportunity to kind of experience a little bit of college life and kind of figure out, is this what I really want for my life? Is this what I've been looking and working for so far? Is it worth it? And if the Academy did, did anything, it showed me that it was more than worth it. The Academy was a fantastic experience. They, I met the most incredible group of people, diverse people in the world. I, I took some pretty amazing classes there. They helped me prepare a lot, especially with academic writing, English, uh, preparation for the SATs, a little bit of American culture, which is really important. And I think overall, what the Academy does really well is put you in an environment that simulates almost in a very in a, in a very similar way, if not exactly the same, what college is life, what college life is actually. Living in a dorm, sharing a room, and having to be responsible for yourself, which means waking up for your own classes, taking care of your dorm room, taking care of your classes, uh, making sure you're eating well, you're doing your laundry, <laughs> which is a really big challenge there. It's still a challenge here. <laughs> so, the Academy did a really fantastic job and it was just a surreal and amazing experience. An experience that really prepared me for this year that I've lived and the following years that I have ahead of me. My first step would actually, if you're able to go, it is, I cannot explain in words, like how much of an amazing experience and opportunity that is for you to go to a college and spend a month there and take classes and meet the biggest, the rangest group of people you'll ever meet in your entire life. We were in 20 students in that program. I think in total we had 14 countries being represented. We had Azerbaijan, the Philippines, Brazil, Austria, Mexico. There were so many countries that I, I cannot even remember right now. Russia, I think. It was super exciting. And I guess if you're an international student and you're considering life in America, whether for college, if you're considering improving your English and you're giving the opportunity to attend such a nice program as the Education USA Academy, I would definitely say go for it. It's an experience that I haven't regretted. I consider it to this day to be one of the best experiences I've ever had. And I include being here at Dartmouth, one of them as well. It was just, it was a fantastic month. I came back a different person. I learned so many different things from different people. If, if, they, if it did anything for me, it just encouraged me and upward my strength and desire to come here study. It's a fantastic program. And if you have the chance, definitely attend. It's, I cannot explain in words. It's, it's fantastic, it really, really is. That was a fantastic perspective to get. Unfortunately, we're almost out of time, but before we conclude our conversation, we would like each of our guests to share a final thought on the uh, Education USA Academy. Larissa in Curitiba, can we start with you? Can you give us some final thoughts? Well, I'd just like to thank the Academy because now I definitely feel ready and prepared for college. And all the things we learned, the activities we did, and the people I met, they not only will help me with college skills, but also life skills. Those are things that will stay always with me. And if you're planning to do and go to the academy, you should do it because it will be totally worth it. Thank you, Larissa. That's a great perspective. Thank you. Uh, Sally and Jackie, can I turn to you for final thoughts? Sally. <laughs> Sure. Um, well, congratulations to Gustava and to Larissa. You guys are great spokespeople for, right. for, for the program. Um, I think for me, looking at the students who are coming through, the and it's difficult for the students, but maybe for the parents out there, to see the students at the beginning of the program and then to see the growth and the level of confidence and, and just how much is learned in a very short period of time. Um, it's inspirational and um, as they've said it before, if you have an opportunity or if you're interested in it, um, you know, please take a look because it's a pretty amazing program.
What a nice vision. Thank you, Sally. Jackie. Yeah, I think what I'd like to say is just uh, more than any other program, um, there's something about this program that builds community. So with this program, what we see happening when students leave, they go back to their home countries, they're keeping in touch with each other unlike any other program I've seen. It's amazing the community that stays with them, but then they're also keeping in touch with us and we're keeping in touch with them. So as we travel around the world to recruit whatever we're doing, we reach out to them and they're there. They meet us. They, their families want to meet us and take us to dinner. They'll come to a recruitment fair and speak on behalf of, of our university. Um, our chaperones keep in touch with them and have even gone to visit them in their home countries. And it's, it's a community unlike any other I've ever seen. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much, Jackie. That is also a beautiful perspective, yeah. and it shows that this is not just a, you know, an a academic program. It's a personal one, yeah. personal enrichment, professional mm -hmm. uh, enrichment down the line, uh, and academic as well. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, thank you both uh, for joining us today, Sally and Jackie and Larissa. And uh, a special thank you to Dartmouth student Gustav Lammers Shehad for providing his perspective as a former academy student. In addition, special thanks to Ivy Hoangnguyen, who is an international student at Temple University and was an Academy chaperone who created some of the graphics you saw in today's program. We're grateful. We would also like to thank our viewers joining us from around the world. We uh, had viewing groups gathered around the world, including in the Centro Binacional CCBU in Linz, Sao Paulo, Brazil, the American Space Ibeo Serra in Fortaleza, Brazil, the American Corner, Pristina, and the American Advising Center in Kosovo. You can find more information about studying in the United States by visiting the Education USA website at www.educationusa.state.gov. There you can find information on the five steps to U.S. study, locate an Education USA Center in your country, one of 436 around the world, connect with us via social media, learn about both in-person and virtual upcoming events, research financial aid opportunities, and much more. Thank you, and please join us for future Education USA interactive web chats. Goodbye from Washington.